Let me show you how to make the perfect cup of chai. In Mumbai, where I grew up, but really in all of South Asia, chai is a way of life. We find ways to incorporate it into every part of our day. Growing up, my dad would stir his jaggery into his cup of chai every day and that's the sound that I would wake up to every morning. Even in workplaces across India, there's something called a chai break because it's such a big part of our lifestyles. Like we need our chai in the middle of the afternoon. The key to perfect chai is really the technique, which is what we're going to learn today. But also a hugely important part is the quality of the spices, right? So the fresher they are, the more potent they are, the more oil content they have, the more flavorful your cup of chai is going to be. So these are the six spices that go into our DIY masala chai, but they're also would go into our chai masala powder, which is the shortcut method. So there's the star of the show, which is cardamom. I feel like cardamom is the flavor that everybody thinks of when they taste chai. Next, for warmth and heat, for like that spicy kick, there's ginger, black pepper, and clove. Then, for sweetness, there's fennel and cinnamon. And these two really complement each other nicely and give you two different kinds of sweetness. So here I have two cups of chai. This one is masala chai. It's aromatic, it's spicy. This is my favorite. This is just plain chai, so it's just milk tea, essentially. It smells and tastes pretty straightforward, milk, black tea. This one, on the other hand, it's like, it's spicy, it's gingery. It's just got a lot more complexity to it. So there are four variables. There's caffeination, creaminess, spiciness, and sweetness. I personally like a low caffeine, extremely creamy, medium sweet and very spicy chai, but I'm weird. That's my ideal chai. Making masala chai from scratch is often seen as super intimidating and we get tons of really, really panicky questions from our community about the process. It is actually pretty straightforward once you understand the technique and the science. Today, we're gonna to do it two ways. So there's either the from scratch DIY way where you're using fresh spices, using fresh ginger, you're smashing the fresh spices, you're adding it to your chai, or there is my favorite way, which is the shortcut. And if you wanna just go straight to that part, skip to the next section. Okay, we're making two cups of chai, so we're gonna use two cups of water. And then for this version, we're doing the whole spices. So I'm gonna start by smashing the ginger. I'm also gonna to toss in the cardamom and the black pepper, smash the cardamom pods open and crush the black pepper just a little bit. All right, those are our spices. So now we're gonna add the whole spices in. And now we're gonna add the black tea. Next up is jaggery. I like my chai pretty creamy, so that's what I do. When I first started making chai, I didn't understand why you had to do this. Bring it up to a boil, let it almost tip over, and then bring it down, cool it down, bring it up to a boil again. Basically, it's about flavor. So right now, we're bringing this guy up to a boil, and what's happening is that the milk and the sugar are caramelizing together. So that's what gives you that really, really creamy mouthfeel. Then you're taking it back down. Force that process a second time um, to get the maximum flavor. And then we're gonna turn it off, then it's done. Yeah. I was a huge skeptic when it came to pre-ground masala chai powders. I just found that they were always stale, didn't taste very good and were kind of a scam. Um, so when we started developing our version, I was very committed to not half-assing it and making sure that what you get in a pre-ground powder is just as flavorful and tastes just as good as fresh. The main reason for that is our, our spices are super potent, we freshly mill them, and our farm partners actually grow our spices to the flavor profiles that we want to bring out. Okay, we're now starting with the shortcut version, which is just three ingredients. It is jaggery, or the sweetener of your choice, black tea, and chai masala. The black tea that's used in chai across India is something called CTC, which is crushed hair curl. It's basically like tiny, tiny, tiny tea granules, and that gives you a really stiff cup of chai. So that's what we're using. We source it from a really beautiful, equitable, organic estate in Assam. So for two cups of chai, I'm gonna do two cups of water. We have our water boiling. I'm now just gonna add all three of these. So about a teaspoon of chai masala. Because it's powdered, there's a lot more surface area for flavor, right? So you end up needing a lot less powder than you would with whole spices. So that's gonna give us pretty stiff two cups of chai. 
Next up is black tea. I'm gonna do about one heaping teaspoon, stiff cup. And then jaggery. I really like using jaggery instead of white sugar as a sweetener because it just gives you this like butterscotchy, caramelly mouthfeel that white sugar just can't give you. So I would always recommend using um, a natural sweetener like coconut sugar or jaggery if you can. And then we're gonna let this come up to a boil one time, which it is already doing. Now I'm gonna add the milk. Once you've added the milk, you're bringing it up to a boil and then bringing it down. What happens is the sugars in the milk and the jaggery caramelize as you're bringing it up to a boil. And that's what gives you that really, really creamy, delicious mouthfeel on your tongue, which you really want. Even though we've used powder, you want to strain it because one, you have the black tea, but also the powder does have like little fiber spits and you don't want a sediment at the bottom of your chai. So I recommend using a really, really fine mesh strainer to strain it. So this is how I make my perfect cup of chai, but I can't wait to see how you make yours. Please tag Diaspora Co when you do.